I wish that in a circumstance like this, I would be able to concede to a worthy opponent. But I do not have a worthy opponent to which I can concede. This was the most deeply deceitful, dishonorable, despicable campaign I have ever seen run for the courts. It was truly beneath contempt. Now I say this not because we did not prevail. I do not say this because of the rancid slanders that were launched against me, although that was bad enough. But that is not my concern. My concern is the damage done to the institution of the court. Yes. That salty bitch you just heard from was Republican Daniel Kelly, who's a candidate for Wisconsin State Supreme Court, and yesterday he was defeated by his Democratic opponent, and as a result, him and Republicans really across the country are outraged because this election was enormously consequential, not just for Wisconsin, but for the entirety of the country. As 2020 Stop the Steel founder Ali Alexander put it, his defeat may actually jeopardize the GOP's chances of taking back the White House in 2024. Why? Well, it's because if he was in this position of power, he could have potentially rigged the election for Republicans, which is something that he tried to do in 2020. As Wisconsin Watch explains, Wisconsin Supreme Court candidate Daniel Kelly advised the Republican Party officials on a plan to have a group of Wisconsin Republicans sign paperwork falsely claiming to be electors in the 2020 presidential election. And so now, since he was defeated... All that goes out the window, and he's not going to be able to help Republicans advance any future potential fake elector schemes, at least in Wisconsin. But it goes deeper than that, because as Common Dreams puts it, quote, Judge Protasiewicz's victory is a huge win for protecting Wisconsinites' fundamental freedoms, said Sean Eldridge, founder and president of the progressive advocacy group Stand Up America. Quote, Judge Protasiewicz will act as a check on conservative efforts to take away reproductive freedom, disenfranchise voters of color through racial gerrymandering, and overturn election results they don't like. Her victory helps build a firewall for democracy and the freedom to vote ahead of 2024, Eldridge continued. So that right there is why we're seeing so much coping and seething, because Republicans in the state won't be able to disenfranchise voters of color, and their antiquated ban on abortion from the 19th century literally is likely going to be overturned now. But let's watch more of Kelly's concession speech, because as you're going to see, he was very bitter about the fact that voters chose democracy over his right-wing authoritarianism. My opponent is a serial liar. Yes. She's disregarded judicial ethics. Yes. She's demeaned the judiciary with her behavior. Mm -hmm. And this is the future that we have to look forward to in Wisconsin. I've been committed to the rule of law my entire career. I understand this to be the most fundamental, basic promise of civilization. And in its heart, it lives in the judiciary, and if not there, nowhere at all. We've had this laid out plainly for us. We could have the rule of law or the rule of Janet. And the people of Wisconsin have chosen the rule Janet. The rule of Janet it is, I guess. <laughs> His tears are delicious. Now, yesterday, just in general, was a pretty bad day for the right, because as Charlie Kirk puts it, Trump was arraigned, Marxist wins mayoral race in Chicago, and Democrats flip Supreme Court in Wisconsin. Very bad day. No spin, no BS. Country is in collapse. We need God and dutiful action. <laughs> Look, Maybe if you guys stopped acting like literal fucking Nazis, I don't know, maybe voters would embrace you again, but they can't help themselves. They wear their contempt for democracy on their sleeves, and then they have a surprised Pikachu face whenever voters reject their authoritarianism. And Charlie Kirk, like Ali Alexander, admitted that this defeat is indeed going to make it more difficult for a Republican to win the presidency, with the subtext being that they won't be able to rig it in that state. Yesterday was not a good day. 
Not only was Trump arraigned, Wisconsin was a blowout, and there goes the Wisconsin Supreme Court, and it decreases our chance to be able to win the White House in 2024. It's not impossible, but we tried to warn people. Turning Point Action was on the ground. We were knocking on doors trying to raise money. The RNC, nowhere to be found. MIA, that's why we tried to do everything we could to get regime change done at the RNC. They wouldn't be bothered. They were too busy doing their things that they do, which is nothing but pay themselves and take care of their D.C. consultants. And then Chicago, not as if it was in a going in a hopeful direction, decided to elect an outright Marxist. Total Marxist is going to become mayor of Chicago. We'll, go, we'll get to these stories, but let's get to the one that is leading, which is the arraignment of Donald Trump. Boo-hoo, so sad. Now Republicans are going to have to try to win in Wisconsin by convincing voters to actually vote for them instead of mm, rigging and rat-fucking their way to victory as they usually do. It must be so hard to grapple with this new reality and live in a world where democracy, at least for now, still prevails. Now, I'd be remiss to not mention the Marxist that he referenced in that video because that was another monumental victory for progressives. The Daily Beast explains, Democrat Brandon Johnson has been elected mayor of Chicago, defeating his opponent Paul Vallis Tuesday night in nail-biting fashion. The close race was called just after 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time by the Associated Press and others, capping a hotly contested race that largely centered around questions of crime and public safety. The former Cook County Commissioner and union organizer was endorsed by the Chicago Teachers Union and United Working Families. He even earned the support of Bernie Sanders, who came to Chicago on Thursday to rally support for Johnson. He ran on policies such as improving mental health treatment and providing Chicago's youth with jobs. He also called for $800 million in new taxes on the city's businesses and most wealthy. Incredible. So allow me to unironically say, let's go, Brandon. But, you know, there you have it. There's a little bit of hopium to uh, help you get through the rest of the week. Voters are, at least for now anyways, continuing to reject far-right authoritarian candidates. And as a result, I'm a little bit more optimistic about the future for American democracy. It doesn't mean that we're out of the woods yet, but to see voters again and again say, we don't want these MAGA extremists who are openly talking about rigging elections that is something that is very, very valuable. Like, I can't overstate how important that is, that Americans are still pro-democracy. I mean, certainly there's a number of them who are explicitly anti-democracy now, thanks to Donald Trump, but the overwhelming majority are seemingly still in support of democracy, and that is something that I think should be celebrated. So these victories are great, and uh, these Republican tears just make these victories that much sweeter. So uh, keep crying. And if you want to win again, Republicans, again, maybe stop being so goddamn extreme and vicious towards marginalized people, towards democracy. Just, I don't know, try to do better. But I mean, I'm not trying to give you advice because I want you to win. But I think that we all have a vested interest in making sure that one of two major parties that are electorally viable in the United States isn't completely fascistic. But I'll leave that there.